Hey guys, I'm Rizbestar, and how about we play Cowdy After Story? So this is a sequel, I believe, to Ace Academy, and in this sequel, this is where you would have romanced Cowdy successfully in Ace Academy. And now, Cowdy, if you didn't know, is best girl. Uh, she was my personal favorite, at least, from Ace Academy. And unfortunately, even though I tried to romance her in my playthrough, I was unsuccessful. And Ace Academy, unfortunately, had uh, rather no ending. It was really lacking in that regard, because Pixel Fate Studio, the creators of this and Ace Academy, and Crystalline, if you've seen that on my channel too, um, they ran out of money, unfortunately. So they weren't able to finish it to the way that they liked it. Um, or the way that I liked it. <laughs> but, um, then I played through afterward on my own, you know, I skipped through a lot of the text and everything, and I basically chose every option that would have made me as big a douche as possible, or that was really self-serving, or things like that. And I was able to successfully romance Cowdy, so... Good to know that I'll just never find love. Um, but I'm really looking forward to playing this, because again, best girl, and I just... I don't know, Cowdy's so cute! <laughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, you know... Our, our, our little romance, you know, how we got to get along as a couple and everything. Um, before I get started, I do want to really thank Pixel Fate Studio for providing me with a free Steam key for this game. That was very generous of you, and I definitely appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoy this play f playthrough, um, even if I might talk bad about it during parts, as I'm probably bound to do. <laughs> but uh, hey, you know, if you guys fixed your grammar mistakes, this should be a lot better. But we're gonna get started now, so start. Enter mail MC's first name. Well, it's gotta be Riz. I didn't see what the default was. Oh, Spade. Who? I don't know. Whoa, was it Zach? I don't know. Anyway, Grass Star. The bus is busy with the bustle of the holidays. Families sit close together, wearing thick jackets and knitted hats. Some people have shopping bags or wrapped presents huddled in their arms. By the way, if you would like to watch Ace Academy before watching this series, I'll provide a link to my playlist of that in the description below. So feel free to check that out first, and then come back and join us here. I let out a loud yawn, my head lolling onto my shoulder. First it was a flight, then a train and a bus. And now another bus. Dude, I have been there. That was me traveling to California once. <laughs> so I feel it, I feel it. All of this travel is wearing me out. I remember the conversation with my family before I left. All of us had been gathered in the kitchen discussing our plans for the holidays. A familiar memory plays in my mind, so I have to see, is it gonna be Nikki and Kaito? Yeah, I mean, it's... Oh, okay. I'm so excited Good. for Christmas. I just want to swim in the ocean. So you can already see, just gonna pause really quickly, you can already see a number of things um, that they've uh, changed from Ace Academy um, that we got to see in Crystalline and that they're still doing here. I will say I'm a little bit disappointed that Nikki has been downgraded to only having a little portrait instead of a full-on sprite, but you can just see the changes carried over. Um, but the art style has changed a little bit too, and you know what, Crystalline, I'll admit, it, it was a little weird to me at first, but I think just because of the foreignness of it, um, it has since grown on me, so I do like it. Not that I dislike Ace Academy's art style, but I'm down. Alright, so I'm so excited for Christmas, I just want to swim in the ocean. That's normal for Christmas. Aunt Yuki sighs dreamily. And bask underneath the sun. Do you think we'll see dolphins? Maybe even swim with them? <gasps> oh my gosh, that would be so amazing! Wouldn't it though? Swimming with the dolphins in winter? What are you guys talking about? Uncle Kaito grins. We're discussing where we should go for Christmas. Yuki suggested someplace warm, like Hawaii. Ah. Do people normally travel for Christmas? Ah, uh, y'all with money. Hawaii is amazing. Good thing I worked on my beach pod. It won't feel like Christmas without snow. Sounds just beachy. Yeah, I don't actually like bodies of water, really. <laughs> the ocean makes me uncomfortable, and I don't really enjoy the beach. Like, Okay, it's fine to relax, but I could just relax elsewhere, and the beach is all sandy, and they're like, you know, animals and stuff. <laughs> so, I'm not a huge fan of the outdoors overall, if you couldn't tell. Um, I'm gonna say this one, because I do like a white Christmas. I don't really care for snow in general, as long if I'm traveling or have to walk or whatever, but I do like a white Christmas. I'd miss the snow. That's because you're crazy. Eh, maybe a little. Christmas is supposed to have snow. They've literally made songs about it. You ever hear someone dreaming about a sandy Christmas? An Yuki jokingly begins to sing. I'm dreaming of a beach Christmas. <laughs> wish to know. The words I wish to know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna take it away from you. You guys go to Hawaii, but maybe I could hang out with my girlfriend here. <clears throat> 
Uncle Kaito joins in. Where beach boy bombs go drink coconut rum. To be fair, they can sing. And the sun kissed girls are all aglow. You didn't even try, Nikki. To, to sing, that is. Nikki finishes with a flourish. I stand corrected. As fun as that sounds, though, I might not be able to join you all. Cowdy asked me to spend Christmas with her family. Yes. I guess it can. And you'd like to go, right? Absolutely, yeah. Nikki gasps and bounces slightly in excitement. She scoots closer to me. Oh, meeting her family? That's a big step. Nikki's really cute, I gotta say. That picture of her is really cute. She's right, you know. You have to go. I want to go. I let out a relieved breath. I was hoping you guys would say that. You sure you won't be upset if I don't join you for Christmas this year? Aunt Yuki shakes her head. I'm sure we can manage without you. Oh. And if we can't, well, I hear there are a lot of cocktails on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Plus, you and me. He gives her an affectionate squeeze. Aunt Yuki looks up at Uncle Kaito with a wide smile. She leans her head against his shoulder. Yeah, you're now uninvited on this trip. <laughs> but more importantly, you were just asked to meet the parents. I was. This is like a Christmas rom-com in the making. So what's the plan? Do you know what you're gonna say? Uh, to the parents? Uh, no. Probably nice to meet you. I'm Riz. I'm dating your daughter. Don't shoot me. Uh... Well, what are they like? Does she have any siblings? Hopefully she has a cool little sister. <laughs> Obviously everyone needs one. I'm pretty sure Cowdy is a single child. Nikki, slow down. Uncle Kaito puts a hand on Nikki's shoulder. She pauses and takes a deep breath. Sorry, you're right. I'm just so excited. I mean... I remember when he was still fumbling over his words every time a girl even looked at him. Still not entirely inaccurate. That's definitely not true. <laughs> Nikki shrugs, grinning. If you say so. I do! At least in game. So, do you know what her family is like? Nope. Not really. Caddy mentioned she has sisters. Oh, she does have sisters. Okay. Nikki is about to speak, but I continue. Older sisters. But that's it. What about presents? Did you get calories? Working on it, probably. Oh, we aren't doing that this year. Oh, okay, phew. All three of them stare blankly at me. Then Nikki laughs. laughs. Sorry, I thought I heard you say you weren't buying your girlfriend a Christmas present. But we're not doing it this year, I said. That's right. Nikki's drilling stare makes my confidence waver. Cowdy and I discussed it, and we both agreed no presents. Then we'll make sure to write that on your tombstone. <laughs> That's not fair. You can't agree for no presents and then be upset when you have no presents. Nikki bursts out laughing. Too accurate. Uncle Kaizo, help me out here. I've lived long enough to know not to argue with women. All right. Aunt Yuki takes pity on me. All right, that's enough teasing. For now, where does her family live? They live far out in the countryside, I think. Uncle Kaito chuckles. Ah, uh, yes. The freezing... Terrible, snowy country. <laughs> you know, I was excited for a white Christmas, so that's fine, Kaito. I'll take it. Nikki giggles. <laughs> I bet you're gonna pretend it's cold so you can cuddle up for warmth. I probably won't have to pretend, but that does sound like a good idea. Ah, uh, a classic tactic. Complete with hand-holding and a possible, you are coming to my coat with me. <laughs> Is that what you tried, Uncle Kaito? He grins. A gentleman never tells. Fair enough. I assume it works, though. <laughs> the three of them burst into laughter, the sound fading into my memory. I blink my eyes open as the bus finally rumbles to a stop. We're here. Yay, it's her voice. Aw, there she is. Fiery red hair focuses into my vision. Cowdy glances over at me, then smiles when she notices I'm awake. Her eyes are bright with excitement, and even though it's been a long trip, she looks radiant. Waking up to her face is always a pleasure, and I can't help but think about how lucky and happy I am to be with her. These last couple of months together as a couple have been a dream come true. Aw, happy for you. Cowdy cocks her head. Is something wrong? I shake my head and smile. <laughs> no, let's go. She nods, smiling back. We gather our belongings and hop off of the bus. Then we flag down a taxi. I look over at Cowdy. She gazes out of the window, watching the trees fly by. The taxi take us through the, takes us through the countryside. The sun is starting to dip low behind the mountains. Purple cotton candy clouds hang over the snowy plains and frozen forests. I wonder what kind of house Cowdy grew up in. Would her parents like me? My stomach flutters with nerves. We finally drive up a long path, taking us up a massive hill. A decent-sized Japanese-style house sits on top. 
I pay the driver and exit the car, howling, howling, hauling our suitcases to the door. Cowdy digs into her purse for the house key, but as soon as she finds it, the door swings open. An older woman with wavy, strawberry blonde hair stands in the doorway. She wears a sunny grin. Cowrie! Okay, that audio clip was a little bit cut, wasn't it? Probably should have redone that one. She throws her arms around her so hard, Cowdy coughs. Comma, too. Oh, I've missed you so much! She squeals, squeezing her harder. Her arms must be a vice because Cowdy can't seem to squirm out of her grasp. Also, isn't vice with a C? Pretty sure it's with a C. It's so good to see you. <laughs> Look at her eyes. Okay, you can again definitely see, um, maybe not crystalline influence, but again, that's where you first see the crystalline style, like sprites and everything, um, with the movement and the more... Actually, I was gonna say more full body, but no, it's actually technically less full body because it's zoomed in more. Anyway, Cowdy's voice comes out pinched and tight. M Mom can't breathe. Oh. She pulls away and smiles, sheepish. Sorry, dear. I'm just so thrilled to see you. As she takes a step back, her gaze lands on me. She blinks, noticing me for the first time. Oh, what's this? Cowdy, did you not tell them that I would be coming? Her eyes suddenly light up. Oh. I thought you were gay, Cowdy! That's not exactly the reaction I expected. Did Cowdy not tell her about me? Hello, I'm Riz. Ha, see? That was basically what I said I would say to the parents. She lets out a loud squeal. Kyrie finally has a boyfriend! Cowdy's face turns pink. Mom! Calm down! But her mother bounces in place. Oh my goodness! I dreamed of this moment, but I never thought I'd see the day! <laughs> That's kind of rude, isn't it? Ouch! <laughs> yes, it is me, the Prince of Cowdy's Dreams. <laughs> nice to meet you. I chuckle and extend my hand. It's nice to meet you, too. Or, it's nice to meet you, too. She shakes it with a little too much enthusiasm, pumping my arm up and down wildly. Oh, look at what a gentleman he is. I try, even though that didn't win Cowdy over the first playthrough. I hear another voice from the doorway. Did someone say boyfriend? Okay, so there's Cowdy, Sophia, and Naomi. I assume it's Naomi and not Naomi. <laughs> anyway. Two beautiful girls stand in the doorway on either side of their mother. They have the same paprika-colored hair as Cowdy, but theirs is longer, and not a curl or and not a curl looks out of place. They look identical, except for the different outfits. They must be twins! The one on the right stares at me blankly. She cocks her head to the side. Well, this is a welcome surprise. Okay. So, okay, Cowdy, Sophia, Naomi, Ayame. I'll try to remember them. <laughs> I mean, I know it shows them, but if I ever want to talk about them. Also, since I'm the boyfriend, I should probably try to remember the siblings' names. Meanwhile, the other one turns to Cowdy. I watch as a slow, devilish grin spreads across her face. Cowdy, you didn't mention anything about a boy. And you probably should have before bringing me along for your Christmas. I just feel like that's considerate. <laughs> Because it's not a big deal! The other twin is still looking at me in silent wonder. She walks around and then pokes me gently on the arm. I can't believe it. He's actually real. I know, I couldn't believe it at first either. Cowdy frowns. Of course he's real. You two are being ridiculous. What are you talking about? We're just excited for you. They're teasing, but they seem like a friendly family so far, and it seems like they have a pretty good bond, so I like that. The girl turns to me and smiles. By the way, I'm Ayame. She gestures to her twin. Now we get to see how it's pronounced. And this is my sister Naomi. Okay, Naomi, got it. Naomi giggles. Sorry about all of this. Kauri's never mentioned a boy before. Let alone brought one home. Wait, never mentioned a boy? How literal are you being? A boy? <gasps> it's the papa, I assume. An older man, who I presume to be Kauri's dad, appears in the open doorway. Unfortunately, again, no dashes in this game, only double hyphens. Oh, hello, young Which again man. is functionally the same, Where did you come from? but just aesthetically Are less you pleasing. Lost? Where... <laughs> Am I lost? They all have a very identical sense of humor, basically. Or similar. I won't say identical, very similar. His voice is so sincere that I'm almost not sure what to say. Uh, no, I came here with Kauri. He blinks. Oh? Her mother beams and digs an elbow into his side, signaling him to stop. Sweetie, this is Kauri's boyfriend. Her dad looks at me, shocked. What? Really? Kauri seems to be struggling to keep her composure. Her face is cherry red, her expression a cross between embarrassed and annoyed. 
Like I said, it's not a big deal. Just let us inside already. Her mother gasps. Yes, of course. What was I thinking? Come in, come in. She moves aside and gestures for us to enter. I do have to wonder, I know it's a little late to be wondering about this maybe, but... Like, I don't think that they plan on doing this for every girl in Ace Academy, and Cowdy was only one of a few different romance options, so... Is it just because Cowdy was the most popular girl, like, after people had t or played Ace Academy for a while? Or is it because, like, Pixel liked her the most, or because they had the best story ideas for her? I'm just- I'm just wondering, you know? Cause this is exclusively Cowdy. The others break apart to give us room, and I follow Cowdy inside. They return to preparing the house while Cowdy's mother leads us through. It's a traditional Japanese-style house, but the decor helps it feel cozy and modern. Also, before they had Japanese-style hyphenated, I'm sorry. Everything is precise and neat. There's a Christmas tree off to the side, but there aren't any decorations on it yet. You have a very nice home. Her mother beams. Thank you. You're welcome. Where should I unpack? Oh, you can stay in Cowboy's room. Perfect! What? I like the sound of this? Sounds fine. I feel like when I meet new people, I gotta be- you gotta be calm. You gotta be casual about things. I can't immediately jump to, I like the sound of banging your daughter, because that's just... Sounds fine. Huh, that's pretty unconventional, but I don't have a problem with it. Okay, thank you. Cowdy stiffens. What? Why are we sharing a room when we have a guest room? Her mother smiles serenely. Well, dear, you didn't tell us you were bringing a guest. So the guest room's already booked. So? Why does that mean he can't sleep in there? Oh, but sweetie, we just have so much stuff in there right now. Oh, stuff. I gotcha. Cowdy arches an eyebrow. What kind of stuff? <laughs> a nervous laugh puffs out of her mother. She waves a hand. Oh, just a bunch of junk. The room is basically a storage room right now and really messy. You don't want to bring him in there. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> Cowdy's eyes narrow as she looks at her mother with suspicion. That's alright, I can sleep on the couch, this will be the best night, let's not make a big deal out of this. I mean, if she's uncomfortable with it, you know, I don't... I want to ease that if I can, so I'll at least offer. Hey, I can sleep on the couch, it's really no big deal. I like that face. Her mother gasps, her eyes widen and she shakes her head. Oh no, sweetie. The couch is so uncomfortable. Maybe you should get a different couch then. What are you talking about? The couch is fine. Ah, well, we got a new couch. <laughs> and it's hard as a- As hard as a brick. You know, I regret my purchase. Oh, I should have never bought it online. Why do you want me to sleep with your daughter so badly? <laughs> Why do I get the feeling that she is avoiding Cowdy's question? Cowdy's mother pushes us towards a hallway. Happy unpacking, you two. Dinner will be ready soon. But you know what I offered? I did my part. Firmly dismissed, Cowdy leads the way down the hall towards her room. I wonder what it'll be like. Sleek and modern? A bunch of mecha stuff everywhere? Anime posters, maybe? A moment later, she opens the door. Aw, that's a pretty room. Cool. The walls are pastel pink. There's a large bed with a plush blanket, pink sheets, and matching pillows. A white dresser sits off to the side. Her curtains are flowy and frilly. A pile of stuffed animals sit propped up on her bed. If I didn't know any better, I'd guess this was a little girl's room. I didn't expect Cowdy Space to be so girly. You pissed off Nikki too. <laughs> I get that motorcycle reference. This is not what I was expecting. So is pink your favorite color? Don't say anything. Yeah, I'll ask. A half smile lifts my face. Cowdy, you didn't tell me pink was your favorite color. What? It's not exactly what I selected, but you know. I gesture to the room. I haven't been here in a while, okay? I resist the urge to smirk. Weren't you just here last year? Cowdy freezes. Shut up! Her face burns red as I laugh. Cowdy wheels her suitcase over to her dresser. She unzips it and starts unpacking her belongings, stuffing her clothes into her drawers. I just had a terrible thought. If Cowdy breaks up with me in this playthrough because of decisions I make, I am going to feel so bad. <laughs> I didn't really consider that too much before, but, <laughs> okay, hopefully it won't happen. <laughs> we'll see. Where should I start unpacking my stuff? Cowdy nods to the closet. It's fairly empty in there since I don't stay here much anymore. Feel free to hang up some of your stuff. Oh, cool. Thank you. Okay, thanks. 
I haul my suitcase to the other side, why is other side one word, of the room and start hanging up my clothes. I have a few jackets, some shirts, snow pants. It never hurts to be prepared, right? I'm in the middle of fishing out an extra pair of snow boots when... Hey, are you done yet? Uh, almost. Wait, what? I turn around. Cowdy zips up her suitcase and stuffs it under her bed. What? You're finished already? She raises an eyebrow. Good to see we still have jiggle physics. Yeah, aren't you? She glances over my shoulder and balks. How did you shove all that in there? You're just faster at unpacking. That's what she said. I packed just enough. You're just faster at unpacking. A blush crawls into my face. What are you talking about? You're obviously just faster at unpacking. Cowdy raises an eyebrow. Yeah, because I didn't bring my entire house with me. You didn't have to. You were returning to it. Jiggle. She's about to respond, but nothing comes out. Ha! Got her there. <laughs> Cowdy glances at the clothes I already hung up in her closet, and then at the massive pile of clothes still in my suitcase. She groans and face palms. Suddenly, Cowdy's mom calls for us. Her voice is faint from the kitchen. Dinner is ready. Perfect timing. <laughs> I follow Cowdy into the kitchen. Nice kitchen, yeah. Our plates and drinks are, are already set out on the table with the rest of the family waiting for us. It looks like our mom made some kind of chicken and rice dish. As I start to dig in, I glance at Cowdy's sisters again. There's something about Ayame and Naomi. I feel like I've seen them somewhere before. So, what do you guys do? Are you done with college? They nod. Yeah, we've been done with school for a while. We model and design fashion. Oh, that sounds awesome. That's probably why they seem familiar. I must have recognized them from a magazine or an ad. They share identical smirks. Thank you. Why don't you tell us about yourself? What do you like to do for fun? Pilot gears, be with Cowdy, chill with my friends and play video games. Yeah, yeah, I'll be honest. I'm pretty chill. I like to play video games and hang out with my friends. Oh, Cowdy plays video games now? <laughs> Not the games he's talking about. But you do play video games. Then, what kind of games? A blush creeps up Cowdy's neck. Don't worry about it. Hmm. Naomi nods. I see. Naomi smirks. So, what are your intentions with our little sister anyway? You, you know. You already know. Cowdy glares at her. Naomi? Oh, so you say Naomi. Is it Naomi or Naomi? I was wondering. <laughs> Now I'm getting all these mixed messages. What? It's a good question. But I think that I should just go with what Ayame said and she said Naomi. Or did Naomi say Naomi, actually? If Naomi said Naomi, I'm definitely going to say Naomi. But I still feel like the voice actors in all of their games, Ace Academy, Crystalline, and in this, I feel like they should have been a little bit more on the same page as far as how to pronounce people's names. Obviously, sometimes with some characters, it's okay to be different because, like, they wouldn't know them as well as, like, say, this person would. But if it's pronounced Naomi, Cowdy really should know that. You know? <laughs> her mother is practically bouncing in her seat. Yes, yes. It's a great question. You too. I really like her. She's my sexy little firecracker. We're just taking it slow. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I really like her. Butterflies flutter in my stomach. I just really like her. My voice is so sincere that Cowdy stiffens. She glances at me before turning a little pink. She's a very driven person. It's what drew me to her when we first met. Wh what? She glances at me in surprise and flushes crimson. She seems almost shy. I didn't know that. Cowdy's mom lets out a little squeal. Oh my goodness. What a gentleman. <laughs> you two are so perfect. Cowdy's dad nods, a hint of a smile on his lips, but he doesn't say anything. Eventually, the conversation dies down as we finish dinner. By the time I'm done, I'm feeling stuffed and happy. Also, I want to just say really quickly, um, I mentioned at the beginning of this playthrough how in, uh, in Ace Academy, when I was trying to romance her and I failed, I only failed at the very last step. Uh, just for the record. There was one moment where you're supposed to, like, hug her. Um, you know, she's clearly, like, really sad. It was a terrible day and all that stuff. And you're supposed to hug her, but I didn't want to force, like, physical contact onto her if she weren't wanting that. And so instead, I just selected to console her. And that was the only thing that, <laughs> that ruined that relationship for me. So, 
that that was the thing of me trying to respect her her physical space and everything and her privacy um and it backfired a little bit but yeah so i was close i was close to romancing her just not quite um yeah okay i bring my plate over to the sink where coyote's mom is already doing the dishes do you need some help oh no sweetie it's been a long day i'm sure you're exhausted i am i nod well thank you very much dinner was great she beams. Thank you, sweetie. I'm glad you liked it. I smile and start to turn away. You two have a fun night now. Why? She totally wants me to bang her. Not Sophia, but but Cowdy. She wants me to bang Cowdy. Not. Yeah. A fun night? Does she mean? No. She couldn't possibly mean what it sounds like. Right? I shake the thought out of my head and return to Cowdy's room. I turn the doorknob and walk straight in. To see Cowdy digging around in her drawer for something to change into. She freezes, blinking up at me. Sorry, I just need to grab something to change into real quick. I grab my pajamas from her closet and rush for the bathroom. That was close. After I finish changing, I make my way back into the hall and knock on Cowdy's door. I'm not making that mistake again. Hey, is it okay for me to come in? Uh, one second. Take your time. I hear some shuffling before she speaks. Okay, come in. When I walk in, the bedroom is bathed in dark blue shadows. Cowdy's dressed in some comfy-looking pajamas. Her hair is down and a little disheveled. She glances at me and then the bed. A blush flares up into my face. I stand awkwardly by the door. Cowdy lies down and rolls over so I can't see her face. Um, what are you waiting for? Nothing. Feel less awkward? I grin as I settle down beside her. Cowdy's bed is surprisingly soft. Cuddle time. Maybe I can get a kiss goodnight. Go to sleep. Go for cuddle time. I scoop closer to Cowdy and wrap my arm around her. I feel her warmth as she gently snuggles against me. My arm snakes around her stomach, pulling her close. She rests her arm on top of mine, entwining her fingers with me. Soon her breathing deepens and I can tell she's asleep. Ah, we got to spoon. Her presence calms me. Somehow, her body seems to fit perfectly against mine, and in this moment, everything just feels right. Comforted by the thought, I slowly drift to sleep. That was there gonna be happy peaceful sleepy time music in this game. And it's the same one in Crystalline, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did Ace Academy have that? Now I have to wonder, did it have happy sleep- happy peaceful sleepy time music? I don't remember. Huh. huh. It's weird to think that I played that game like almost a year ago now, I think. Not quite, because I had um, Doki Doki Literature Club before that, but still. Cue outro, go!